oftentimes you can get into uh, residential property. Maybe what you do is you use, you first buy it as your own home, right? So you can use certain government programs to use fairly low money down to get in and occupy and start building up some equity in a home. And then you may intentionally do a cash out refinance if you've built some equity up, use that equity to go buy a new home and then keep the existing home that you have and turn it into a rental. It's one of the most common pathways that people get into real estate ownership. And at that point, you're probably in long-term real estate. Okay, so Mm -hmm. long-term tenants, which just means that you're not talking about short-term contracts, you're talking about actual leases, whether it's month to month or a year at a time or something like that. But somebody's gonna live in your house and you're their landlord. And okay. The terms of the lease are going to determine how much they pay and some of the responsibilities. But generally speaking, the tenant has the responsibility to not like destroy your place and to notify you if things are broken. Right. And the landlord has the responsibility of showing up and making sure the face the place stays livable and the things that are broken because they weren't like abuse or negligence. You know, like the stove breaks and the tenant didn't break it. It just sometimes stoves break. Okay. Landlord's supposed to fix that. Right? Right. Um, the roof is leaking. Landlord's supposed to fix that. The toilet backs up. Well, why did it back up? Well, it backed up because of misuse. Okay, well, there's some uh, some issues here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you know, sometimes, like, the tenant has some culpability, sometimes not. And so, but, but bottom line is you're going to collect monthly rents. Right. right. You're usually going to have some kind of security deposit. And that's so that there's a certain amount of contingency that if the tenant is destructive, you have a little bit of cost recovery when they leave. Right. Okay. Um, so the, the, the pros are once a tenant's in, they're a good tenant, it's relatively low maintenance for you. It kind of just works and you don't have to do a whole lot of hands on other than the typical sort of maintenance that may come with the property, right? Right. You decide whether or not you have yard service or the tenant's going to do the yard, right? Trash service or not, those sorts of things. Lots of pros and cons, not the subject of this show. But relatively easy to collect the money. Some of the dangers though, varies by state. We're in Oregon, okay? Oregon tends to be very tenant Protective. favorable. Yeah, favorable right? I mean, And so the landlord tends to bear a lot of risk if the tenant becomes right. adversarial, right? Right. Tenant refuses to pay. Uh, the eviction process is fairly long and drawn out. Tenant starts to destroy stuff. It's, it's pretty difficult um, to, you know, get people out of the way. So you, you can have some pretty expensive tenants if you get the wrong kind in there. 